Welcome to Salam Nerds Podcast. We do reviews and recaps of nerd culture, reality TV, and current events from this week. Yo, 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 it's the Salam Nerds. My name is Dean, aka Watch the Geek, I'm here my boy Chad. We drop live episodes on YouTube on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. All episodes can also be found everywhere podcasts are found. Thank you to all our supporters. Please help us by subscribing and leaving a good review at Apple Podcasts and... Yo, 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 salam, nerds. It's your boy, Neebs, a.k.a. Watch with Neebs, and I'm here with a special guest. First time on the show. I've been on his show a couple of times. It's the first time he's been on our show. Dimitri, the host of The Key Show. Welcome to Salam, nerds. It, 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 uh, thanks for having me. Um, it's hard to keep track of, like, yeah, what episodes have we done, like, on my thing? I could have sworn I've been on here before, but, no, like... I don't think so, but you... It, I have it, been it gets on... confusing, because, like, I asked I you know. to come on, you asked me to come on. So I, I, I've definitely done uh, X-Men with you, and I've definitely done Miss Marvel with you, and I feel like there was one more in between there that I don't really remember what it was, but those were the two that I do remember. Yeah. Uh, and they were good from what I remember. I don't yeah, remember the, you, uh, you know, doing sucking. badly at it. <laughs> I don't remember you sucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's harder to get you on my show because you have a very busy schedule, bro. You do it all. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that you you brought that up because I just did a podcast literally half an hour before this, right? This man is, is incredible. You know what people don't know? People might not know about this, but you were on a game show and you were a big winner you hold a record for consecutive wins on that show yeah yeah uh so the person uh it was called person place or thing and that was the game show it was on fox so it was nationwide mm. at different times depending on where you are um yeah. but it's a classic trivia kind of 20 questions sort of game show and when you win you go on to the next episode so i was on 20 episodes because i won Damn. 19 and lost on the 20th, you know? That's crazy. Oh, my God. That would have been cool if you got 20. But 19 is a pretty damn Oh, good so now number. I'm not good enough for you? Is that what I, you're saying? I'm just saying 20 is a nice oh. round number. But yeah. I, I like 19. My birthday is on the 19th. So I, I dig that. I, okay. I, I dig it. But okay. no, that's really cool, man. Uh, Won some big bucks. Got to be on TV. Got any fame from it? Got any other uh, than the moolah? Um, I got a lot of, like, hotel stays. Oh, so. okay. You know, I should be doing some traveling soon in like 2025, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and I got it like a pizza oven, though I haven't uh used it yet, I haven't unboxed it yet. That's I might, cool. I might give it or sell it or something, but uh, I love pizza, but a pizza oven that's a big commitment. I would know? just give it away on your podcast and be like, Welcome, the, the person who gives me the best review will get a pizza oven, <laughs> and then like just like have a bunch of people write you reviews. That's what we do, we give away um. One piece lanyards. <laughs> it's not as good as a pizza oven, but hey. Like one piece like the, the anime? One the piece? anime, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We got a bunch of exclusive NYC Comic Con uh, lanyards that are one piece, and we just give them away to everybody who gives us a good review, gives a screen cap of the review and an email, and we will send them to you. See what if what if I give you a mediocre review? Like ah, that that guy Dimitri. I don't know. I don't know. I will give you the so. lanyard, but I will cut it in half. <laughs> I, I put like I put the badge on it and just falls. Yeah. It just um, falls. What's your next Comic Con that you're going to? Uh, probably San Diego will be the next one. I don't know if any other ones I will be going to. Uh, we missed you at the New York one. I thought you were gonna come. I was, I was. Um, and then I decided I couldn't quite make it work. Mm. But then, out of like everything that people were posting and all the news coming out of New York, mm. I got major FOMO, and I uh. told myself, okay. I guess uh, 2025, like 2025, I'll go to New York. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But because this was this was a really good one. I guess it was like back up to speed because the two year before it was like COVID and then it was like still recovering. Now it's in full swing. It's back to its full potential and, and it's really yeah. really good. Highly recommend you come for the next one. It's still a lot of fun and it's just it's just easier than the San Diego one. It's not as much waiting in line. Like you still wait in line a lot, but it's not like you don't have to spend like an entire day waiting in line. It's it's a little bit smoother. Yeah. Uh, I like it. I enjoy it. Hopefully you come next week. Uh, the Penguin was there. Uh, they did a little um, 
panel there and a lot of people loved it. So that's okay. cool. So speaking of the penguin, let's talk about episode seven. Most of this yeah. episode was a flashback. What are your thoughts about this episode overall? Overall, I mean, it was really good. I had been hearing the, uh, I think it was like Colin Farrell who was saying, by the way, how crazy is it that this penguin is Colin Farrell? Like, I don't see him. I don't I see, he disappears. See yeah. Yeah. Um, like, if you told me that this character, that this character of the penguin was played by an actor that looked just like him, right? Yeah. That, that, that it wasn't prosthetics or anything, I would have believed you. And been like, oh, who's this new and great upcoming actor? Yeah. Or it's Colin Farrell dressed up and in prosthetics. Um, I think that's wild. It was so incredible. And like it's not just the prosthetics, it's the acting too. He just gets lost in the character. And yeah. you're almost like, this is the real person. He doesn't speak like with that accent, he doesn't talk like that, he doesn't have that swagger, that attitude, that James Gandolfini vibe, but he it is very it James up. Gandolfini, right? It really is. It definitely yeah. is. But they, 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 to be fair, they have established that Gotham City is New Jersey, and yeah. the Sopranos take place in New Jersey, so it wouldn't be out of the realm for him to have an accent like a Jersey mobster. I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't be mad at that. So I definitely, I definitely like that. One thing that I didn't um, expect was to f get a flashback, and this episode was yeah. mostly the flashback, and we got to see Oz as a young kid, and not only. Did this kid did a great act acting job, but he looks just like the fake Colin Farrell, like, yeah. <laughs> like, like the hair swoop and the, the way he walks and the way he talks and even like the face. Like, did they find this kid first and then make the prosthetics to see like what this kid was like? Well, that, it was just a good job. I wonder I'm, I'm looking up who that who the um, the actor is, but the kid yeah. looked familiar um because i think i've seen that kid before in something mm. um but i mean the kid did a great job and part of me wonders whenever they do like in in a movie or tv show or whatever where they do like a young version of a of a regular character yeah. i always wonder does the young actor watch the performance yeah and then take yeah. that on because sometimes they're really spot on but yeah. then when you get to something like shazam or shazam yeah. 2 zachary levi is doing his own thing oh know? my god 100 percent uh he's doing his own thing and then asher angel i think is the actor who plays the young billy yeah um he's a great actor also it's just not the same like it's not the same it's not the same character honestly i think that has his own issue i think zachary levi had a little bit of an an ego check and he's kind of just put inserted himself in the second movie more than he needed to be because the first movie i think is really great but it has very little zachary levi and more yeah. asher angel and i just feel like he was pissed about that and in the second movie he reversed it and he wanted more screen time and he wanted to be more of the, the character and it just didn't really jive with the audience yeah uh i think zachary yeah zachary levi definitely got too big for his boots uh for the yeah. second and then to the point where like yeah that kid barely showed up yeah it's so weird i don't know it's strange to be yeah. fair he's like almost bigger than zachary levi now that kid is like huge now <laughs> yeah he's super tall you know yeah, yeah. that being said a shout out to um who is it jack dylan great Gra jack dylan grazer jack dylan um and adam brody they play the same character. oh yeah they play the same yeah yeah they and they, they're job. spot on yeah, like it seems like that's just him growing up. Exactly. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I totally, totally see that. Uh, uh, Megan Good, Megan Good's character also. Yeah. When the little uh, Darla, I think, is her her name, and then she grows up, and it's Megan yeah. uh, Megan Good. Yeah. Uh, she still acts like that little kid. Like she's still. Yeah. 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 Exactly. No, I definitely get. Like Zachary Levi was just like Zachary Levi playing an immature kid. Like that's really what it was. Right. Because. Yeah, I don't know. It's. Uh, there's so many problems but yeah i really did like the first shazam though i like I did it, too. The, the scene where like he realizes his mom just like him and then he jumps off the building i was like oh man this movie is sweet man this is like gets you hype like you really but like the second movie didn't really didn't really have that it really didn't no um i mean mark strong is the villain in the first movie first one yeah and i think i love mark strong and like yeah, everything yeah. he does 
and Mark Strong's in the Penguin. We're bringing yes. it back. Yes, yes. Full circle playing Falcone. I know, I know. All Instead right. Instead of uh, John Turturro, who plays yeah, in the which movie. is weird because like I, he, I heard an interview where he said that he didn't like all the violence towards women, and I'm just like. That doesn't really jive with me because number one, first of all, the Batman had a lot more violence mm-hmm. towards women, and and number two, like I feel like this is almost the opposite because Sophia Falcone or Giganti, who is really like one of the main characters, takes her power back and it's very empowering. And I would almost say it's the opposite of that. It's actually more female focused. I think the, the showrunners are female uh, women and it's just really weird that he would have that take for this show. Cause I feel like it does the opposite. It doesn't like show a lot of women get killed and just have be, be gratuitous and just for, I don't know, action sake or just for, to drive the plot for the male characters. They actually show it in regards to Sophia Falcone and what she's going through. And a lot of the violence that happens to women, they don't actually even show like all of the women that were killed by, um, you know, uh, what's going call it? Falcone. Yeah. They don't really show. It's kind of just like said in, you know, so I don't know. I don't really agree with that, that, that he yeah. would say that it was kind of weird for, for me personally, like talking about like, I can only really draw for like my experience as a guy is that like, I don't think that it it's particularly violent towards women. Yeah. Though the plot of the hangman has to do with the murders of these women. Right. Right. Um, but I think there's a difference between it being gratuitous versus it being literally a reality that women aren't safe in real life, but also yeah. in Gotham city. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but it, it, what I like about it is that it revolves around the women's storyline, not just Sophia, but also Eve, who was the prostitute that was around mm. Penguin. And then she was like, hey, these women were my friends. And she was like, you still think I'm the hangman? And then she finds out that like the Penguin really knew about this and was kept her in the dark. And then she gets her revenge on the Penguin to say, hey, right. I'll tell you where he is. So like, it's not just there for no reason. There's purpose to it, which in my opinion, I, it, it, I feel like it gets a pass. So I don't really agree with his statements, but you know, he's entitled to it. It is what it is. Right. He could also just not wanted to do it or he was just given it and they pitched it to him and he just dismissed it and didn't want to hear it. So we don't, yeah, you know. we don't know. We don't know. Um, yeah. The other thing that I find really interesting, speaking of like some of the female relationships in this uh, show is the penguin's mom uh she really gets front and center like you would think she's like a side character or a small character and she's also somebody who is going to just you know prolong somebody else's storyline but she's in this for a substantial amount of dialogue and action and plot and this episode brings that out more than anything else because even in the flashback you realize what kind of attachment he has to his mom he has a weird attachment and then when she gets you know we'll talk about it later but when she gets captured by Sophia she's also like a main character she's not just somebody who's kidnapped you see her have this monologue and she's just like a character you didn't think was going to be that important that turned out to be very crucial to this story and I really really like that what are your thoughts about the mom um, as far as like recent penguin media, uh, cause in the comics, they don't really, um, like, like modern penguin doesn't have his mother still alive. If anything, yeah. she's died in the past or whatnot. Uh, but I guess modern penguin media, Gotham, the show Gotham, Gotham had his had mom, bit, yeah. Yeah. you know, be alive. And then in this, and so having penguins, as, penguin as a mama's boy, um, could be lazy. I feel like the choices they make in the show could be considered lazy choices, but they aren't. Like, they, they don't aren't. go down that road. Um, but I don't know. Like, I Colin Farrell said that, like, we would hate Oz by episode eight or something. How many episodes are in this season? Is, I thought it was just eight. Is it ten? Okay, so by the end of the season, we'd be hating yeah. Oz. So this episode made me hate him, right? Like, yeah, he, I'm already. I already hate him. Like, you like, know what what he did to his brothers is is foul, uh, right? Because even the stuff that he's doing is still bad. But you almost feel for the for the protagonist, even though he is basically a bad guy right you still yeah. root for him for some reason same thing in breaking bad the wire there are bad people that you root for that's just how the story is structured 
Um, but yeah, this one with, with Francis Cobb, I feel like she is someone who lets us see a really interesting side of the penguin. And my theory was about like what you just brought up about how we will hate him. I think the penguin is going to kill his own mom because she already gave him permission, but instead of doing it in a way to save her dignity, he's just going to do it to save his own ass. Uh, yeah. I was trying to think of where this leads because I mean, I thought in this, in this scene, in this episode that it, it was very suspenseful, right? He's, he's waiting. He's gonna, he, he lifts up the thing and I thought it would be the mom in there, but no, I thought so too. Yeah. You know, the explosions and whatnot. And so, uh, I was expecting that. And the fact that like Sophia didn't kill her. Yeah. I think the big question is who does penguin actually love? Like we're, it's this whole thing is being built up as like penguin loves his mother. Yeah. And it's meant to like, make you think like, Oh, it extends. It would obviously extend to his family. We didn't know he had brothers. Then we find out he has brothers. Then we show his brothers. Why wouldn't he love his brother as much as he loves his mom? But he doesn't, and then mm -hmm. kills him. And so, who does he love? Because we see, like, we think like, oh, he has a strong connection to Vic, and he would love Vic as a mentor mentee relationship, right? But then we find out that, like, now nah, he's just just as willing to like pull a gun on him and like point it at his head. So, I think the only way that this goes is we show that Oz only loves himself. I, I think that I think that's valid, but I do think there is one more person that he seems to kind of love. And that is Rex, who is this mobster that he talks about in the first episode. And now we get to see him in this flashback and uh, you could see him as a kid, just admiring this person. Why? Because he's around town. He gives people money. He, he makes people like him. And he almost like based his own character off of him and as we see in the tunnels where he's like i'm giving people work man there's nothing better than giving people money and giving people work and giving them dignity like hey that's how we do it that's like so he has this like personality that he is trying to mimic and that's what he loved he loves this rex guy because he admired him the way he just like commanded the city that he lived in and mm -hmm. he would help out his family, but his brother would always say, no, he's he's not a good guy, man. He's not a good guy. And he resented his brother for that. And I feel like that's another character that we got to explore that I found really interesting. What are your yeah. thoughts? Uh, well, I don't know if this is going to blow your mind. Rex Calabrese is, or Calabrese or whatever, is a character in the comics. Very small Catwoman, character. Catwoman's uh, dad, right? Yeah. So Catwoman's dad, because there's this whole storyline where he thinks that uh roman falcone is is her father right. and that goes the whole thing and then she like thinks it's rex calabrese okay uh i think it's penguin's father in this like it's yeah. the only thing that makes I sense think so too. you know i think so too yeah i think that'll be really really interesting and that's why his brothers don't like him he thinks he's a bad guy um so i totally get that so and they're leaving they go into this tunnel and they go into the tunnel because it starts raining he wants to get his brothers out of the rain it takes too long to get home so like you know what we're gonna play flashlight tag in the tunnels until the rain stops and then we'll go so they're playing flashlight tag and you know the brothers are kind of like teaming up against oz and you kind of see this dynamic in a lot of i guess like siblings when you have like maybe three siblings or four siblings there are always this like connection with two of them and then one gets kind of left out and they, they feel a little alienated so it was the older brother and the younger brother and the middle one gets kind of alienated and he was the one who was the mama's boy the other two just like to hang out with each other and a lot of it could be because he had the brace he couldn't keep up with them so yeah. when they went down the tunnel they didn't think that hey you know what he they did this to me because they know that i can't do this so he's angry and shuts it down on them and you see him just leave doesn't care and you would think that at one point or some point he's like okay i gotta go save them i gotta go let them out they learned their lesson no he just wanted all the attention of his mom to himself and did not care to let them out and they drowned and yeah. you just go to see that like oh penguin is not a good person at all he is bad news bears from the jump what are your thoughts about that uh, I, I think you see it in that scene right before it where it almost makes it seem like he's an only child, like his yeah. mother loves him, but then the two other brothers come in and start taking the focus from him. 
Yeah. And so, you know, his mom starts focusing on them and she loves them too. Yeah. Uh, and he's jealous and uh, it's not great and it mm -hmm. makes me hate him. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, like it adds a level of nuance to his character that like that this is the reason why TV shows are invented, right? Yeah. Like a movie, you can only go into so much, but like a TV show is doing its job right as a TV show by getting into that nuance of this character, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, no, I, I totally agree. It. I like it. It works. It. Yeah. I hate him, but it works. Yeah. And then you see he gets exactly what he wants because like he's helping his mom and then like he leaves out dinner for her. He's taking care of her. And then his mom's like, hey, you're going to give me everything that I deserve. You know, you, you need to make sure that I get this. And you see that he has a weird love relationship with his mom, but she's also kind of toxic and putting this yeah. pressure on him and making him do all these things and be like, I deserve that. You need to do all these things for me. And it's a really sick, twisted relationship that they have with each other. They pretty much just are giving each other some kind of like toxic weird love and yeah. it, it's really interesting to see that yeah i mean it is weird i don't think it's to a utmost degree of weirdness i don't yeah. think that they're hinting at game of thrones related stuff but no. like but but the but the neediness and the and the right like the attachment is it's too much it's toxic yeah. it's it's um there's a word for it um um codependent codependent right? yeah yeah right? yeah absolutely and so uh i mean we see that and she's also just not a nice person no you see she's that with not. sophia because when sophia kidnaps her she just imagines like an old lady yeah 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 and it's not she it's, and she and she's got bars she's like hey yeah. i always heard Oz talk about your house it's kind of shit <laughs> and i thought that was really really funny yeah uh she talks a lot of shit and i thought that was really cool uh but yeah so basically oz comes back to his neighborhood and he goes ah the lights are on you see him like talk to that uh, councilman or senator or whatever to put the lights back on he did it and parts of him when he's talking to him he's like hey man you got to put it on for the city but really truly he just wants it on for himself for his drug business so like he has this like i guess delusion that he is this hero for the city, but everything he does is really for himself. It's not altruistic, right? But he loves the fact that it comes off altruistic for uh, uh I would say yes, mm -hmm. but I would also see it as he doesn't always explain his altruism to get yeah. attention, but rather if he can be selfish and altruistic, yeah, he'll do both. That's but if he, thought, yeah, but if he can't be altruistic he will be like he'll be selfish all the time yeah if he can get that altruism for example the reason i bring it up is when when sophia's people are coming for oz and oz is like vic get out of the house right yeah. they're coming to get me yeah he doesn't make a big deal about like being the great person to let vic loose yeah he lets him go knowing that he's gonna get taken yeah yeah you know what i mean I, I totally agree. The other thing yeah. I feel that's interesting about Oz compared to these other gangsters is that all these other gangsters rule by fear. But Oz wants to be feared and loved, right? <laughs> that, that Michael Scott <laughs> meme. He's like, do you rather be feared or loved? I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. That's what <laughs> I think of when yeah. I think of Oz, right? He yeah. wants people to love him, but he also wants people to fear him. And, and, and that's what gets him greedy. So he wants the love, he wants the fear, he wants both. And he goes in and he finds Vic on the floor and he's knocked out. He tells him to go, you need to raise an army. And then basically he gets taken by Salvatore Moroni, gets beat up, and then gets taken to where the drugs are. And this is where that whole I want to be loved and feared comes in because when he gets taken there, the people support him they find a way to help him and that's something that you only get with love because if it was just somebody you feared and another gang or a boss taking them out you don't care you yeah. don't care but then you're like this guy is for us he's for the people he's helping our town this other drug ring you don't know what they're gonna do they're gonna pack it up take it somewhere else and do something else with it right so they were incentivized to help us not because they love him, but because Oz was investing in their town and it gave them a little bit of that, like, uh, I would say, I don't know, like some kind of like 
they had money and they had skin in the game. And yeah. I feel like because of that, they supported him and it worked out for him. And I find that really interesting. I think it's funny that he set up all that goodwill just to have it turn around. And then when the bomb comes into play, yes. he doesn't warn them at all. No, he doesn't warn them at all. He runs. He could have yelled at them yep. to like duck for cover or something. I mean, it would have cost him would... nothing to do that. But he doesn't think that way, right? No. So that's what makes I him mean, a selfish character. Because even in his head, he thinks he is this hero, but he's really not. Yeah. Uh, um. So all the, I mean, are we safe to assume that all those people are dead? I think a good chunk of them are dead. Yeah. The they whole, have to be, right? They have to be. They're trapped underneath all that ground and rubble, which kind of just fell. Yeah. And the only reason he had an open thing is because he went down the tube that he had closed when he killed his brothers brothers right? yeah, that yeah same thing and he closed it and like but what a great callback to that scene in the beginning where you just like how did he survive oh he knew about this and it's it just really really well written and i love when things come back around and speaking of things coming back around we also mm -hmm. find out that you know uh the psychiatrist dr rush talks to uh you know sophia and it's like hey yeah. gia is you know spazzing out a little bit you need to go and talk yeah. to her and then she goes and talks to her and she says hey i saw something like what did you see I saw the gas mask right i saw the mask and she's like and then you see um sophia just trying to talk to her and try to like gaslight her and explain to her like hey this is what happened and then she realized that she's doing the same thing her dad did and he's like you know what she's gonna tell you you know what i did kill them and they deserve to die so it's almost like reminds me of the scene from kill bill and she's like hey kid if you need to come see me after <laughs> you're older we'll settle this up but i i'm not gonna do what my dad did i'll just tell you what happened and you see what a toll it takes on her because she wants to be different she wants to be not like everyone else but she realizes that when you're in this game you end up being just like everybody else what yeah. are your thoughts about that i mean you summed it up right yeah. like uh i i wonder what's gonna happen with with gia is that her name gia gia yeah um because sophia wouldn't want to kill gia you know no. and i don't think that that'd be the case um i'm more worried about julian rush yeah i don't know what he's all about like that guy yeah. that guy is weird he is weird he hitting that though <laughs> yeah but like what's his goal he's so it's like reverse harley right yeah yeah, yeah. or no it is Harley. it I is mean, harley. It would be harley yeah, yeah, yeah right like he was the psychiatrist and he fell in love with her quote unquote yeah. fall in love but i think he's just gonna die right off i think sophia's just gonna like pop him like could be could be he's helping know? her out right now and and doing the little weird light thing to get more answers out of uh the penguin's mom mm, yeah you know? and and we, we learn now that she has something called louis body d dementia which is like a certain type of dementia which i think is really interesting that they mentioned that um yeah. And then, yeah, after that happened, we also get to see the fight that breaks down in the in the basement. And as Fal uh, no, Maroney is fighting Oz, he just has a heart attack and just dies of a heart attack. And you see Oz just like go, what the hell? I thought we were going to fight. Like, what's going to happen? And then he see, see him the way he just flipped out at Alberto and just shoots him with the gun, even though he's already dead. Like the man's unhinged, but like, what do you thought yeah. about that way to go out? How do you think about Maroni dying from a heart attack? I didn't see it coming, but I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it's rare that it happens like that. It's almost anticlimactic from a writing or viewer yeah. perspective, right? But it's real. And yeah. Maroni's been through a lot. He's been stabbed, right? Yeah. Like he pulled himself together. Yep. His his family has has passed away and whatnot. So I can buy it. What I think is really interesting is that like you ask yourself, would Oz, I don't think Oz wanted the fight. I think he says he wants the fight. I don't think he wants the fight. I think mm. he wants the luck and he wants the win. Yeah. But I don't think he would fight. He wants to fight Maroney tooth and nail yeah. when he could just have the easy win. But I think he's almost ashamed that 
he was denied that opportunity to prove himself, but I yeah. think he's happy that he didn't have to prove himself. Yeah, he just wanted that bravado to be like, hey, I killed him, but he, he can't say that, which I think is really yeah. He did take the ring, though, which I was like, I, I noticed that. I thought that was good. And then Sophia and he, calls he him. He makes it look like he beat him. Right? He makes it look like he beat him, right? Exactly. And then Sophia calls him, and he tells her, hey, listen, I'll give you everything. Just bring me my mom. And then Sophia's going like, listen, this is just going round and round and round. And she has this like coming to Jesus moment where she's like, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do something simply different. And instead of sending his mom, she she sends a bomb. Yeah. And the whole thing just explodes. Uh, what yeah. were your thoughts about that? I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I wanted to like dive yeah. into it. Like, What do you think about Sophia's like choice to do that? I mean, I, I don't, I think Sophia is trying very hard not to be like the other mobsters um, and just and send family's body parts to people. Yeah. Uh, but I also think that they're setting up, I think, I would love it if it ends up this way. I would love it. And we'll, I mean, we'll find out when we watch the final episode. I would love it for Sophia to say, look, you have a choice. I will either kill her now or you give yourself up. Yeah. And he wouldn't. Because the, no. the thing is, trying to figure out where the line is between who Oz cares about versus who he doesn't care about and who he's willing to leave to die. And you're meant to think that he would never leave his mother to die. Yeah. I think he would. I think when it pushed up, like for me, opposite, I would give myself up for my mom. Sure. Oz would not. No. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Oz wants to be seen as a loving person. But he is not a loving person. He is a very selfish person. Yeah. Even the love that he wants his mom want from his mom is not from the love of his mom. It's from a selfish reason. He doesn't want other people to have this love of his mom. Yeah, right? which so makes me wonder: different. Did she date? Did she date after? Like, does he sabotage relationships for her? Why doesn't mm -hmm. she date? Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Right. She needs somebody to to you know help protect and stuff like that i mean i think her mom did like books and stuff she was like a bookie for rex but other than that like what else right what else right. could she have done to make money so oz probably had to go and make money he probably did work for rex right that's probably what happened and that's who he emulates but he's not really like that he's he's yeah. a lot more selfish yeah yeah oh well. No, I agree. What do you think is going to to happen now? You know, she 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 tells um Sophia that like Oz personalizes things, and she has this like Alzheimer's episode, like a dementia episode, where she kind of just like she sees the rain. It reminds her of her brothers, mm. and then she kind of just gives up like what happened with the penguin, and then it also kind of gives you know Julian, uh, was if the name Julian Julian Rush, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it gives him like hey. Go in, go in, you know, psychoanalyze her and let's find out. I think what's going to happen is Julian is going to find out everything that happened and he's going to tell Sophia and Sophia is going to use it against Oz and be like, hey, you did this to your brother. I figured it out. I know what kind of person you are. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's th this definitely like the final episodes is leading up to all this going down. But my. I, I don't know who's going to live or who's going to die. I think yeah. that, like, if somebody doesn't die at the beginning of episode eight, yeah, if or if somebody does die at the beginning of episode eight, somebody will die at the end of episode eight. Like, there will be more. But I don't think, I don't know. I don't know if Vic's gonna live. I don't know whether Oz's mom's gonna live yeah. or not. Because Vic is a ticking, like he he has a countdown clock on him. He's hanging out way too much with, yeah, with him, you know. I think um, that, I think I think Vic dying is something that would make us easily hate the penguin, which makes sense because the penguin is a villain, right? We're spending a lot of time with him and we're feeling for him and he's turning into like a protagonist because he's the main character of the story. But we have to remember he is a Batman villain. Next time we see him with the Batman, we want to root for the Batman. We don't want to root for the penguin. And right. he has to do something really, really bad for to remind us that, hey, he's a bad, bad dude. Yeah. Here, here's a question for you. Do you think Batman's gonna appear? I know he said to not appear. I know he said, but you literally had a whole like couple city blocks collapse into itself. That is true, but it's only been like a few weeks since the whole city collapsed on itself, right? We're pretty much in no man's land. 
uh, right. arc, right? So if you right. want to watch the No Man's Land arc, Batman pretty much just left Gotham and is trying to like figure out what's what to do. Uh, and he talks to he's pretty much Bruce Wayne and he's talking to the Senate and trying to get people to open up and bring in more support for um Gotham. Are you, are you talking about the also, comics or the Gotham show? Because I know no, they both did it. They both did it, but I'm talking about the okay. comics. I'm talking about the comic at the moment. Yeah, they yeah. might they may do it similar to the to the, the show too. Um, even the Dark Knight Rises does a little bit of like no man's land where they like yeah. separate Gotham. So this is like a, yeah. a common arc, it's a very big arc in the in the Batman comics. Um, but we don't have all the other characters to fill up all the stuff. We don't have the Robin, we don't have Batgirl, we don't have Stephanie, right. we don't have all these other people. So Batman's still going to be in here, but I think it's just like too much. Than he could chew on at the moment, right? Like I don't know, and they're saying the main villain. I think they announced it that it's going to be the Joker, which for I'm what? not for the Batman too. No, I, I mean I I heard that the main that Joker might get a spinoff series like Penguin did. Oh, that's what that's like that. He, but I don't want the Joker. I, honestly, I'm, I'm all Jokered want, out. I'm, I'm all Jokered out too. Especially with the the new movie leaving a bad taste in everyone's mouth. And, and I didn't even all... watch it. I don't need to. I'm just like. Just let it, like, just retire the Joker just for a little bit. Every like, there are so many good Batman villains, and we're seeing yeah. it in this show. Like yeah, the yeah. Penguin, right, and even not only the Penguin, Sophia Gigante. Like, yeah, like, like it's such a deep cut. She's a she's a character from Long Halloween and Hush. And does, does she, she pop up in Hush? No. Uh, oh, she's year one. Dark. I think I think she was in year one or year she's two. Not in year, She's not in year one. She's in Long Halloween for sure. She's definitely in Long Halloween. I know that. And then I think she's in Dark. No, Vic no, no, no. She's in Dark Victory, in which Dark is the Victory. sequel to Long Halloween. No, she's in something else too. I don't remember. Mm, um, maybe one of, I don't know. Maybe one of the year one, the year twos, but I don't know. But I remember she's, she's not in year one. I know that because I've I've read year one like a billion times. Okay. Uh, but I'm gonna look it up right now. That's what the internet's for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she's definitely she is a deep cut and like i don't think a lot of people will know she was in that new one uh i think was she in the new one the new uh batman cape crusader one that just came out on hbo she might i mean she might have been yeah she might have been in that too um as far as i'm reading she's only she's only in dark uh long halloween dark victory okay all right i could have sworn she's been in more but maybe there's an uh i mean the one. other falcone have been. The other Falcones are, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, all right. That that is a deep cut, and I feel like they did a good job. Like she is yeah. a very, very likable uh villain at this point. Yeah. Um, to the point where like honestly, the actress, like if if she gets nominated for an award, I'd be I'd be on board with that. Because the yeah. I think the fifth, fourth episode where she guesses everybody. Such good acting. It's yeah. amazing. Well, Kristen Mil Miliati is so good. Like she's so at, good at comedy and drama. And yeah, like, she's on 30 Rock. She's How I Met Your Mother, uh, Black yeah. Mirror, like so much stuff. Yeah. Did you ever see did you ever see Death to 2020? It was that mockumentary no. on Netflix. No, no, but someone mentioned that to me earlier. Yeah, she plays uh it's she's so funny. She's yeah. in Death to 2020 and Death to 2021. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. That's good, man. That's crazy. Yeah. No, man. Um, I'm definitely loving the show, but I do not think the Batman's gonna go. I think this show doesn't need a Batman. I wouldn't be surprised if they they mentioned him. They did mention him once already. They said a vigilante. They did call him that. I think in some like random, I think a news thing or something. I don't know. I did hear them call him a vigilante. I forgot who said it, but I don't think he's gonna be in this thing. I do think Just the, the silhouette. Pat That's all I want. Just no. like just have it that like you see the back of him. And like that's maybe, fine. Maybe a bat signal. <laughs> yeah, something, you know. I don't think he's gonna be in. And honestly, I'd be okay with it. I don't think the show needs him right now. It doesn't need him. But at yeah. the end, at the tail end, yeah. just give us a teaser. That's it. Yeah, like an end credit scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th yeah. They still play the Nirvana song. <laughs> yeah. <It's just> <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Be so great. I don't know, but I don't know, man. The, oh, the... Uh, we got somebody on YouTube saying maybe James Gordon. Oh, that would I mean, be a good get, one. Uh, what's his name? Um, um, why am I blanking on his name? I always think uh, Jeffrey Wright. Uh, 
Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. 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 He's, yeah. That would be really good. That'd be really yeah. good, man. That was a SH. That's a great one, man. That was a good, good one. Yeah. I would love to see that. I think that'd be really, really cool. Um, Cause right now we've only, we haven't seen anyone else from the Batman in here. Other than maybe Alfred, maybe we can get an Alfred cameo. <laughs> Uh, I feel like he does. When I think of these actors, I think of like, do they do TV and movies or just yeah. movies, right? And yeah, I feel yeah. like Andy Serkis only does movies, but like, oh, he, was so the, he was an Andor. Oh, yeah. By the way, Andor starting back up soon. Oh, shit. Yo, I'm that's so going to be the next excited. show. Uh, yeah. Yo, come back down the show for Andor. We'll definitely okay. Talk about All right. That. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I would, I would be surprised if nobody, no cameo showed up. I, I, I could expect to see like Zoe Kravitz show up just for one scene. Cause she's she is the half sister of she's Sophia. The half sister. Yeah. Damn. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Zoe Kravitz show up. I wouldn't be surprised if you had a shot of the Riddler in Arkham. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they got to do something. And who's the Julian Rush guy? Like, He's doing some weird things, and it's like I don't think he's an actual character, like from yeah. the comics. But like, what's his purpose? A lot of people are saying uh, the Scarecrow, but I think that's a little too obvious, too on the nose. I don't think. And I don't think they it. would rename him. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, they did rename Oscar, but still, I don't think barely. Uh, like barely, barely. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. They could always yeah. be like, "Oh, that's not his real name. His real name was Jonathan Crane," and like you know. So <laughs> I, I, th I think that's fair. But I, I do think the drug, uh, Bliss, will yeah. not be the Scarecrow drug. I think, no. I think it had the better chance of being used as Joker toxin. In, in eventually because bliss makes you happy joker toxin makes you happy smile and laugh mm -hmm. i can see that being a little bit more related than being used as a fear toxin yeah i mean in batman there's a lot of toxins right like, there are, there's yeah. there's a bunch of like random things in fact one of the things that i think is interesting is at the end of the batman he takes like this green adrenaline shot which looks yeah. just like venom and i'm just nah, like it's, it's not, not though it's, it's not. just an adrenaline shot but... i know but i was like oh that that this seems too in the Batman sphere, right? So you're like, oh, okay. right. But no, right. I don't. I don't think it is. Uh, who do you think we're gonna see in the in the Batman? Who's gonna be the villain? You think Joker? You think it's gonna be Riddler again? You think it'll be somebody we haven't seen? I would have to give. I would have to give like the odds, right? Like, I would say, okay. So I, I think best odd, best odds would be a silhouette of Batman. They don't have to do much for it, right? I yeah. think that's the most likely going to happen. Like, okay. I would say like five to one odds silhouette of Batman. Ten to one odds, I would say Zoe Kravitz shows okay. up. Um, okay. I would say fifty to one odds, Paul Dano's Riddler shows up. Mm. And then I would say five hundred to one odds is Robert Pattinson, like his face, like as Batman or Bruce Wayne. Him mm. actually showing up on set to film a scene, that's yeah. 500 to 1 odds. Like, What are the odds of nothing? I would say that I would say it's more odds that nothing would happen than yeah. for Robert Pattinson to show up. I would say 1,000 to 1 odds that nothing happens. I'd say I'll most likely something happens. I think nothing's going to happen. I think, think nothing's going to happen. You I think, think nothing. nobody's going to show up. I think no one's going to show up. Not a damn person. There's also an idea that they could hint at a person that we've never seen before yeah they would just be like oh i have i've got a phone call from pamela isley and then yeah. cuts. i mean like, magpie magpie was in this but that's the best that's about the depths of any cameo we're gonna get <laughs> it was so z-list magpie yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah all right fine you know i don't know we'll see we'll see but um i don't know I mean, but like i just really like the matt reeves universe like it's just so good the only thing is it's too realistic like i don't see us get ever getting a clay face in this universe that's my problem though that's my problem okay so i i love the batman it's one of my top three the way i sum it up is it's one of my top three theatrically released batman movies yeah so i have like my three the batman is one of them mm -hmm. uh the batman mask of the phantasm and lego batman and like I'm a huge Batman fan. Nobody can claim I'm not a huge Batman fan. Yeah, Lego yeah. Batman movie yeah. is one of the best Batman movies ever. 
what i i do love it it's i think a, it's really, it is really a funny. parody of sort right it's a comedy yeah. right but if you took out the lego part it's yeah. still a good batman movie yeah, yeah. you know what's really yeah. funny in the, in the beginning he goes like warner bros no music and like all that stuff that he does at the end if you put that back to back with the batman it actually matches up oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's so I, funny i love the batman but i didn't ask for the batman because yeah i like there i like my Batman to fight Clayface, to fight Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, to have fantastical villains mm. that are like sometimes supernatural, sometimes powered, sometimes down to earth. I Matt Reeves' Batman universe doesn't lend itself to Man Bat showing up. Sure. But I, I love me some Man Bat, you know? I get that. I get that. Um, But I, I do feel like we're going to get that Batman in the James Gunn universe. Oh, right? yeah, we will. We because will, yeah. al already in Creature Commandos, Clayface makes an appearance, and we know that Creature Commandos is going to be uh, canon, and yeah. it's going to be back and forth from animation to real life. So we yeah. are getting Clayface in the You know, DCU. everybody cast for Creature Commandos is voicing it and doing live action? Yep, in doing live action, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, which is just, wild. But, that's wild, uh, right? That's super yeah. crazy. Uh, which is smart, man. It's really exciting to see that. I, I kind of dig that. But that comes honestly, out soon, by the way, too. Yeah, yeah, it comes out soon. I was at their at their Comic Con thing at their panel. Mm. Uh, um, but the thing with the Matt Reeves one is that like I do love that they focused on Batman simply being a detective because remove all yeah. else, Batman is a detective, and they focused on that. And I want them to give us a villain where he still needs to be a detective. You don't need a detective to be, you know, I guess like. Uh, no, that's not true actually he could there's a lot of villains you can still use but i really want him to be up against someone like deathstroke right like who could he could use his like skills with and he could yeah. also use his martial arts but also his detective skills um yeah. but we'll see man we'll see it, yeah. it, it, we are getting the joker i know that but we are getting his his movie but i i agree with you i'm jokered out yeah i'm jokered out yeah. Uh someone um, said, do you think the penguin is required watching for the Batman too? I it all depends on what happens in this eighth episode, but I, I don't think it's going to be. I think Sophia I Falcone, recommend it. I think but... Sophia Gigante is gonna show up in the Batman too, but really? you won't really you just need to know who she is. You don't need to watch the, the show. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's easy to just be like, Yeah, she's the daughter of Carmine, right? Exactly. Um, I don't think we're gonna see the penguin again. I I don't think I don't think Colin Farrell likes putting on the makeup. Yeah, which is funny because, like, I mean, he signed he signed up for this, and then he he did the makeup for Horrible Bosses one and two. Like, wait, he was not, in Horrible Bosses one and two. You don't you don't remember him in Horrible Bosses? He's one of the Horrible Bosses. Oh my god, I have to go look back him and up. Watch. Look look him up right watch. now because, like, the fact that you didn't know that was Colin Farrell that's funny. It is him <sighs> with a bald like balding head and and like. Uh, like a belly. L look him up, Colin Farrell. Hold on, hold horrible on, bosses. Colin Farrell, horrible bosses. There's a meme too. Yeah, he's. Oh uh, yeah, 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 that was him. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, I see it now. And that's there, like there. minimal prosthetics, right? But yeah, and Penguin is more so, but. Yeah, yeah. All right, but yeah, he, I, I don't think he wants to do it, so I don't think we're gonna see him in the Batman too. Uh, so maybe you think he's gonna die then? Ooh. If he's not showing up ever again, he could here's, die. Here's the thing. How are we supposed to hate him if he dies? Oh, I hate a lot of characters that still die. I don't think dying re, re like redeems you. I don't as a character. It depends how you die. If he dies saving his mom, saving Victor, like how are you gonna hate him for that? You don't hate him for that, but you hate him for everything he's done. It doesn't make up for it. I don't think he, I guess he is like hateable, but like I don't know. I don't think he's done enough for me to just hate him at the moment he still has redeeming qualities i think the only even way though they're from that, a narcissistic place yeah the only way he redeems himself it's not if he gives his life for his mom i think if he gives his life for vic yeah then that means something that does mean something yeah yeah i don't know there's a lot of people who think vic is going to become like victor's ass or no. victor freeze i don't no, see that's that coming. super dumb that that's, is yeah. the dumbest most internet theory like no yeah, yeah. people so were like i heard these vic he must be either cyborg vic Stern, <laughs> or or he's mr freeze victor freeze or he's victor's azaz you know and it's like or 
he's just Vic, dude. A lot, of, a lot of victors in the in the DCU. <laughs> I just realized. Uh, yeah. Someone says, "What if he betrayed Victor? That would make me really hate him." I think yeah. betraying him would definitely do it. Yeah. Yeah. But then betraying him and then dying, you're kind of just like, eh. I don't know. I don't think he's gonna die. I think he's just we're just not gonna see him again. I mean, Until, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. But I do. I do enjoy the Matt Reeves universe, and I hope it yeah. keeps keeps going. I don't want it to end. Uh, but that's really all we got for this episode, man. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This was really cool. Dimitri, let people know where they can find you. Yeah. Uh, if you want to follow me personally, you can find me at this is Dimitri on like Instagram. That's my personal Instagram. But my big thing that I like to, you know, get people to come out and listen to is is the Keeg. Uh, and that's at the Keeg Show. TikTok and Instagram are two biggest ones at the Keeg Show, but we're also at the Keeg Show slash the Keeg Show everywhere on social media. Uh, we do a couple of podcasts. Uh, comic Talk is our comic uh, specific podcast we do thursday nights where we talk about all the comics that came out that week and then we also have like the key talks where we talk about movies tv shows a little bit of comics so you can find us at the key show on social media and just keep up with all our stuff that way okay cool all right we have one last question i i, I ignored it be before because it didn't have to do with the dcu and we're talking about um the penguin but someone is asking who is your favorite current mcu hero there's is the Scarlet Witch. Dimitri, who's mm -hmm. your favorite MCU superhero? Oof. Uh, that is... Who current. Is my favorite? Who that is means my they're not, current... They're not dead favorite. and they're not retired. They're, like, active right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Current. Oh. Uh, I love I love Miss Marvel, and I'm really looking forward to, like, what Miss Marvel does in the future. Yeah. Um, the Avengers. I also... I love Kate Hawkeye, like, Kate Bishop mm -hmm. Hawkeye. Um, so, I'm, again, excited about that um sam wilson i'm very excited about brave new world and sam wilson and red hulk and whatnot sure i'm also excited for thunderbolts uh oh simu liu shang chi mm, you know solid pick it's been way too long for a sequel like why is it way too like that guy was such an up-and-comer mm -hmm. why does it take five years to do a sequel come yeah, on yeah nope that's solid i like that answer I like yeah. that answer. Uh, for me, who would it be? I'm trying to think because there's a lot of stuff that's coming out, but I think, hmm, I wanted to say Blade, but he's, I don't know if he'll ever get a movie <laughs> at this point. At this point, I don't think we're yeah. getting anything. Uh, but Daredevil. Let's do a Daredevil. He was in She-Hulk, so we're going to go with Daredevil. Can't oh, like, Daredevil Born Again is going to be cool. Yeah. I'm actually I'm I'm very curious about Wonder Man. Yeah. Cuz I love that actor. I uh, uh yeah. Yaya Abdul Mateen. Yep, yep. Um I'm I'm I I like him as an actor. So I'm yeah. very excited. And then uh Trevor Slattery is coming back. Yeah. So apparently him Trevor Slattery and the guy uh the Arab guy in Succession who plays the DOD agent in Miss Marvel, they have a 10-year contract with Marvel. So we're going to see these characters in, uh. over and over again in the last 10 years i don't know how but i got a scoop that someone told me uh at an event i went uh from cool. one of these three actors okay. <laughs> like from the from the horse's mouth so All yeah right. uh mm -hmm. that'll be really cool anyways guys thank you so much for joining us and until next time guys salam nerds <laughs>